Here we go from Bob Wren Stadium as we get set for this Maction Series in Athens, Ohio. The Bobcats play host to the Kent State Golden Flashes, the preseason favorites in the Mid-American Conference. Alongside Daniel Barnard, I'm Sam Hyman. Thanks for being here on a cloudy day in Southeast Ohio. Daniel, we'll start with the Bobcats first, coming in with a five and nine record overall, one and two in Mid-American Conference play. What's the key for the Bobcats here today? Yeah, so Sam, you were on the call last weekend against Northern, Northern Illinois. They dropped two out of three in that one here at Bob Wren. So this weekend against Kent State, they're gonna wanna look for a lot better fielding, more fundamental baseball, fundamentally sound, a lot of coaches like to call it. The fielding has been a struggle so far this season for the Bobcats. It's no secret they are last in the MAC in fielding percentage, down around 950. I think 952 was the exact mark that they were at. And when you look at Kent State, a team at the top in that fielding percentage, they're at the top for a reason. They're a very good team. Ohio trying to climb those ranks as we uh, head into the weekend. All right, on the other side for the Golden Flashes, quickly the key for Kent State, a team that was, again, picked to finish first in the league. Yeah, Kent State, Jack Kartsanis going on the mound for them today. That's where their success is going to lie, on the shoulders of him. He has been very solid, had a, st had a rough start to this season, but he's been coming on as of late. All right, we are underway, and the first pitch is hammered into right field. Goodbye, baseball. Kyle Jackson, touch them all. Well... <laughs> As if we didn't already know that they were a very good team. Kyle Jackson, a very strong season, gets it going. Wow, Kent State sends a message early on the first pitch of the ball game. And it's 1-0 Golden Flashes. Turn that fastball around. Lefty on lefty too, Sam. You don't see that a lot from... Uh, from the South Paws, and he just hammered that one. Dylan Masters in his second start of the season. I'll have to put that quickly in the rear view mirror. Dylan Masters is a junior from New Albany, Ohio. Two balls and no strikes to Josh Johnson, the center fielder from Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. Masters quickly deals, two balls and one strike. So Dylan Masters had a great start last weekend against NIU, five shutout innings, only one walk, zero runs, and six strikeouts. And this ball is cranked down the left field line and hooks foul. But, you know, Masters getting the opportunity to be the Friday night guy today. And he gives up a first pitch home run. He's gonna have to quickly refocus here. Two, two, three and two. A traditional bullpen guy is Masters getting the start, his second start of the season. He's appeared four times, this being his fifth, second start. So, as you said, last weekend a very good start against Northern Illinois. Good at bat here between Josh Johnson and Dylan Masters. I spoke to Dylan after the game against NIU after those five shutout innings. He said confidence was the biggest strength of his heading into that start. And watch out for Dylan's slider. He loves to throw the first pitch slider. Also has a changeup, splitter, and fastball. Fly ball into left center field. A.J. Roush maneuvers over and makes the catch for out number one. So the lineup for Kent State, Kyle Jackson, we heard about him and then some with that first pitch home run. Josh Johnson followed by Tim Orr, who's up right now. Michael McNamara, Dom Kibler, Colton Schaller, Brody Williams, Jake Casey, and Aiden Hines round out the lineup for the Golden Flashes. Yeah, Brody Williams and Jake Casey, two guys in this lineup. Was that first pitch was a little outside. Two guys in this lineup that head coach Jeff Duncan really emphasized that they want to get them going. He said that he loves to have a very complete and competitive one through nine, as does every coach. But he said that he thinks if they can get those two going, that they're going to be a very complete lineup. Dylan Masters quickly, after every pitch, he's right back on the rubber. Two balls and one strike to Tim Orr, the senior from Canton, Ohio. Two balls and two strikes. Jake Casey, the son of Sean Casey, former big leaguer, as you uh, noted earlier. Yeah, he'll be due up 
later on hitting eighth in the lineup, and Dylan Masters just hit Tim Orr, so runner at first with one out, and the batter is Michael McNamara. The defense surrounding Dylan Masters left to right in the outfield, A.J. Roush, Gideon Antle, the highly touted center fielder, Paulie Mancino is in right field, a freshman. Nick Dolan is the third baseman, J.R. Nelson, a freshman at short. Alex Finney at second base, Bryce Smith, the graduate student at first, and Jackson Cawthron does the catching for Dylan Masters, who deals a slider down and in, and the count is one ball and no strikes to McNamara, the senior from Cleveland. One thing I've noticed here early, Sam, Masters working inside on these hitters, quite a bit inside, maybe missing his spots a little bit, but seems like he's really trying to hammer that inside part of the plate. Yeah, that's a good call, and... Now with a one ball, one strike count, we'll see what Masters go to. Pitches here, four pitch sequence, and he throws over to first. Our umpire and crew today, Steve Miller is the home plate umpire, Michael Ingram over at third, and Bryce McCullough is at first. And the first base umpire, Bryce McCullough, just acknowledged over to Kent State's dugout to hush once <laughs> Masters is set and throws two and one and yeah, we were talking about a pregame sam that team came in rowdy and ready to go especially in pregame warm-ups when they took infield and outfield they were a rambunctious group continuing it here <laughs> no doubt backdoor breaking ball two balls and two strikes as that hit the corner for dylan masters six three junior from new albany ohio here comes the 2-2, and a check over at first. McNamara is a threat on the base pass. This Kent State team likes to ratchet things up a bit on the bases to create some havoc. Swung on and miss, strike three, two down. Yeah, Tim Moore down there at first base getting a lot of attention, Sam. He's only stolen four bags this year, been caught twice as well. He's four for six on stolen bases, but Masters really trying to limit the uh, running, it seems, here early. McNamara strikes out. Here's Dom Kibler. 1-0. and oh. So Kent State comes in 8-8. 8 and 3-0 eight, and oh in the MAC, Fresh off a, a sweep against Central Michigan. 1-0 oh is on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Kent State started the season 1-7, but... Since then, seven and one, they had a challenging non-conference schedule. One one is blasted down the right field line and that ball is foul. <laughs> My goodness though, Kent State's <laughs> offense, they're, get, they're getting they, that barrel on the ball. They certainly are, they're, they are having no trouble seeing the ball out of the left arm of Dylan Masters here early. It was Kyle Jackson obviously turning on one, blasting it out of here on the first pitch and then Right after him, Josh Johnson hooked one. Ground ball to first, Smith bobbled it and collects to retire the side. So one pitch, that's the only thing Dylan Masters wants back. A home run for Kyle Jackson on the first pitch of the game, but that's it. It's one nothing Kent State as we head to the bottom of the first inning, Ohio Bats for the first time today. Game one of our three game set from Athens.
Jack Cartsonis, the junior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 6'3", 210 pounds, makes his fifth start of the season. An 8.53 ERA across four starts, but don't let that fool you. He's coming off his best outing of the season against the Chippewas. Six innings, only one run allowed. First pitch is outside, ball one to Pauly Mancino. Cartsonis also struck out a career-high 10 batters in that outing last weekend against Central Michigan. 1-0, and Mancino drives it in the air to right center field. That ball is gone. Pauly's playground is back. He goes yard, and we're tied at one. Both sides with a lead off home run in their respective first innings. It was... Kyle Jackson in the top half of the inning on the very first pitch of the game. Pauly Mancino in his first game batting leadoff this season goes deep. Second game, I excuse me. Yes, yeah, second game, but still. And the second time, or the first time he led off was the last game against Moorhead State midweek. So this is his first real opportunity. Sometimes those midweek games get a bit skewed. And... Uh, that 20 to 10 result, hard to really peel from yeah. that because Moorhead State's field is, it's like a, a sandbox. It's, it's so small. <laughs> well, I'd say hitting a uh, leadoff home run will do you some justice hitting in that leadoff spot, maybe solidify himself a little bit. Come on, Come that ball was crushed. He went the other way with it too. Yeah. And, and Paulie did that earlier this season when he hit a home run last weekend against Northern mm -hmm. Illinois. J.R. Nelson whacks it on the ground to short. Michael McNamara makes the play, and there's two outs, uh, or one out. So how about the, the back and forth there? We get a solo shot from the top of the order. Kyle Jackson, Kent State. Paulie Mancina responds at the top of the order. Two table setters to make it 1-1. I love it, Sam. I was looking into some of the box scores for Kent State coming into this game and noticed that their pitchers overall have really struggled in the first few innings this season. And I was going to make a note of Ohio really wants to start this game out quickly, get to Cartsonis early, try not to let him get into a groove. And Mancino did that beautifully on that first at bat, let the pitch travel into the zone as he did, like you said, against Northern Illinois. I think that was the game tying home run in extra innings, 10th Huge. inning or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was. It was big. He drove that one to right field, drove this one to right center. And Ohio on the board early. Here's Gideon Antle, who leads the MAC with a 458 batting average. 0 2 and a rare strikeout for Gideon Antle. Jack Cartsonis, he'll put that in his back pocket and remember it because Gideon Antle doesn't strike out. It's only the fifth time he struck out this season. And this is his 14th start of the year. Yeah, he got him with the high cheese right there, Sam. Blew the fastball right past him at the uh, at the numbers. His eyes lit up from Gideon. First pitch low for ball one to Alex Finney, fifth year second baseman from Oxford, Michigan. What a start to this game. Jack Cartsonis deals. And the slider hits the outside corner for a strike one. So Jack Cartsonis, he'll linger anywhere between 92, 94 miles an hour, maybe hit 95 with his fastball. And that's something that Coach Duncan emphasized a lot. He loves the heater that Cartsonis brings to the table. Yeah, he said he loves the heater, but he can also be in the zone a little too much is what he said as well. He's looking for... A lot of variation here today against Ohio. A lot of uh, in, out, up, down, so to say. Try to vary the, vary the eyes of the hitters. Get them off guard. 2-2. Two -two. And Finney whacks it way foul right side. And to your point about trying to mix up inside, outside, high, low, that strikeout, against Gideon Antle, high. it was a, it was a high fastball, yep. and Gideon chased, so trying to put that to play here today, and he did it there. 2-2, foul back. 
you said it, Sam. He's a he's a big time strike thrower, but sometimes throwing too many strikes can also be an issue if you get him in the zone every single time. The hitters are going to adjust well and they're going to start hitting you well. So the variation is huge. Good AP here for Alex Finney. Three balls and two strikes with two down. Bottom of the first inning. Kyle Jackson led off the top of the first with a solo homer on the first pitch of the game. Here's the 3-2, and that's ball four. And then Paulie Mancino led off the bottom of the first with a solo blast. Only one walk in last week's game against Central Michigan. He didn't have any against Jacksonville State a couple weeks ago, so that just being the second walk and three appearances for Cartsonis, an uncharacteristic walk that extends the inning. Never know what can happen after that. A little two-out magic. Here's Jackson Cawthron, the junior catcher from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And he takes inside one ball, no strikes. A lot of energy in both dugouts right now. 1-0 is painted on the outside of the frame, strike one. That was pretty right there, right on that outside corner. Cartsonis del delivers. Two strikes to Jackson Cawthron. Looks like he pulled the head a little bit on that one, looking down the line in right field. That pitch stayed outside. Gonna wanna go with that one, drive it to left field. One ball and two strikes, the count with two down. And that's high, there goes Finney. The throw is not in time. Finney swipes second base. And so that is gonna put the Bobcats in a position to perhaps take the lead, a runner in scoring position with two outs. That's Finney's first stolen base on the season. An Ohio team that doesn't run often, just their 10th stolen base overall on the season. Get a guy in a scoring position here with two outs. 2-2, two -two, swung on and missed, strike three, and Gartsonis retires aside. But Pauly Mancino, a bit of a wake-up call for Ohio there as they respond. One-to-one -one is our score heading to the second inning from Athens. Third year head coach Craig Moore for the Ohio Bobcats in the dugout right now, rocking the helmet. Prior to Athens, spent two years as an assistant coach at Creighton and was the head coach at West Texas College at JUCO from 2006 to 2010. Has a ton of coaching experience. Here's a ground ball sent to the right side, deep in the outfield there for Alex Finney and he makes the play. One up, one down. Colton Schaller is retired, but we've had the chance to chat with Coach Moore a couple of times this season, and going back to the beginning of the year, he said, we're motivated to show people that we can play this game at a high level. After not making the MAC tournament last year, Bobcats went 15-15 and 15 in league play. 
they are poised to really make a statement here in 2024. They certainly are. They, they came out early in the season as well, Sam. That one tapped foul, but early on in the year, their first road trip against Lipscomb, a team that has been historically very good and a good one this season. They took two out of three from them, got off on the right foot, just trying to find their footing here as they get into the middle parts of the season. Yeah, Coach Moore is very familiar with this program as the one-two is fouled back, so... He is used to the ups and the downs, the twists and turns. Before he took over as the head coach at Ohio, he was an assistant for eight seasons under Rob Smith as Dylan Masters strikes out Brody Williams. Two up, two down. And so he, he's been through the highs, he's been through the lows. And this team last won a MAC championship in 2017. It's gonna take time, but this year, one game, one pitch. Ohio, fresh off that series against NIU, left a bit of a sour taste in their mouth. Felt like they could have taken two out of three, but dropped two out of three instead. Yeah, absolutely. Talking to some of the players, especially that game one of the doubleheader last weekend, and they had several comebacks late in the game. 11 innings, that one, that one stings, but they were able to bounce back well. You talked about bouncing back. Ground ball up the first baseline, fair, and Bryce Smith takes it to the bag himself. Dylan Masters with a fantastic one, two, three, top of the second inning. We are tied at one, heading to the bottom of the second right after this from Bob Wren Stadium. Back here at Bob Wren Stadium, game one of a three-game set. Kent State led by head coach Jeff Duncan in his 10th season. Three-time MAC Coach of the Year. This Golden Flashes baseball program has been historically very, very good. Tied at one here in the bottom of the second inning. And the first pitch to Cole Williams is swung on and missed for strike one. Last year, Kent State, 40 win season, lost to Ball State though in the MAC Championship final. 0-1 is on the inside corner, strike two. But this team is definitely built to get right back to that position and get some revenge with a ton of returners. Here's the 0-2 pitch, inside one and two. Well, they're built for it, and they know they're built for it, Sam. They came in radiating confidence today, and if you're Jeff Duncan and the coaching staff of those golden flashes over there, that's what you want to see. You want to see a team that's confident. Here's a ground ball to second, and quickly one down. Aiden Hines made the play to retire Cole Williams. But yeah, there's a lot of swag and a lot of confidence with this Kent State baseball team. There were some key pieces that departed from a season ago, including Joe Whitman, first team All-American who was drafted, second round pick by the San Francisco Giants, and then also a first team All-Mac pitcher, Ben Cruikshank, and Mitchell Scott, who was one of the best closers, if not the best closers in the MAC last year. A.J. Roush. Swings and one ball and one strike count now. So some pitching holes that 
Coach Duncan had to fill, but there's a lot back for this 2024 squad. 1-1 one, one is blasted down the right field line. Jake Casey, long run, and it's out of play, one and two. Well, just quickly going back, Sam, to what I was hitting on before that when we talked with Coach Duncan a couple days ago, Carson Francis, who will be on the broadcast on Sunday here, he asked a question about their pitching and the recent surge that I think the last four games they've given up three runs or less, and he asked if there's been any major changes as that one stays upstairs. He asked if there's been many any major changes in the pitching room, and the coach just said they stay confident. There hasn't been many major changes, but they're a very resilient team. A.J. Roush singles through the left side. And after just going two for 11 last weekend against Northern Illinois in three games, Roush one for one to start this series. That's a good piece of hitting right there to find the hole in between the third baseman and shortstop. McNamara not able to get over there. A.J. Roush on first base. First pitch is a called strike to Bryce Smith. Nothing and one. Oh and two. And again, this is not an easy Kent State pitching staff. I mentioned some of the names earlier that departed, led by Joe Whitman, a second round pick in last year's MLB draft. But Kent State pitching last week, to your point, made a huge adjustment in terms of statistical numbers. The starting pitchers combined to go 16 innings, only one earned run, 19 strikeouts, and four walks against the Central Michigan team. Record-wise, not the prettiest, three and 14 overall, but still Kent State got turned around on the mound last weekend. Hey, you can talk about record all you want, but when you get into conference play and you get into MAC play, every game is just as intense as the other. Every game means the same to each team, and they come out with the intensity as if each team's 0-0, &0 each team's 10-10, and -10, whatever it may be. Kyle Jackson, the third baseman, makes a terrific play for out number two. Roush moves up to second. And that'll bring up Nick Dolan, redshirt junior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, third baseman. So I brought up the defensive alignment for Ohio in the first inning. Real quick for Kent State, Tim Orr is in left, Josh Johnson in center, Jake Casey is in right field. Kyle Jackson, who just made that play, is at third base. Michael McNamara is the shortstop, Aiden Hines at second, Colton Schaller is at first, and Brody Williams does the catching for Jack Cartsonis. The 0-1. One ball and one strike to Nick Dolan hitting 313. This is just his fifth start of the season. He's been in a battle with Taylor Gill for the starting spot at third base. Two and one. Dolan had his share of clutch hitting with two outs last weekend against Northern Illinois, a base clearing double. Three RBIs there, half of his RBIs on the season. Now with two outs here, he's got a man in scoring position. See if he can't capitalize. And that gets away from the catcher, Brody Williams. A.J. Roush maneuvers to third. And it's a favorable count for Nick Dolan. Three balls, one strike with two outs here in the bottom of the second inning. And time is called. Quick conversation with Brody Williams and Jack Cartsonis. Oh, the home plate umpire jogged out there right away as well. I don't see that that much. So here we go, Nick Dolan against Jack Cartsonis. Two Pittsburgh PA natives. Yeah. 
And that's on the outside corner, strike two. Big get back pitch there from Cartsonis. Yeah, I don't I don't hate the take right there from Dolan. It's gotta be a perfect pitch right there. Three to one count like that with the top of the order coming up. Three two is called strike three. Ohio can't believe it. A throw down to first is in time on the drop third strike. That was on the bottom of the zone, apparently, according to home plate umpire Steve Miller. Craig Moore is saying that Brody Williams reached down with his mitt to snatch it. Tough break for the Bobcats. We go to the third inning right after this. All tied at one. And there's a look at the starter, Dylan Masters, junior from New Albany, Ohio, transferred from Murray State, only played the 2022 season with the Racers, four appearances in year two at Ohio. And the first pitch is outside ball one to Aiden Hines as we start the top of the third inning. Back with Daniel Barnard, I'm Sam Hyman. Thanks for being with us here on a cloudy day in Athens, Ohio. First game of three this weekend between the Bobcats and the MAC preseason favorites, Kent State. Well, Dylan Masters making just his second start of the season, Daniel. What's impressed you so far about Dylan? Well, his ability to rebound after the leadoff home run, Sammy. Oh, that one was close, just off the inside corner. But his ability to rebound after giving up that first pitch home run to Kyle Jackson, just one base runner since then. That was the hit by pitch by Tim Orr, or on Tim Orr, I should say, back in the first inning. But since then, he's retired five straight hitters, looking to make it six here with Aiden Hines and a full count. But the ability to stay true to himself. 3-2, bullseye, right down the heart of the plate. Strike three called. And Dylan Masters has his third strikeout. And now we will flip that lineup back over, and Kyle Jackson will stride back to the plate. So we'll see if Masters... Make some adjustments. Only he, of course, he only had one pitch against him. So yeah, <laughs> see if he shies away from the fastball. And, and this time is the slider too far inside. Ball one to Kyle Jackson, senior from Bowling Green, Ohio, third baseman. And a slider this time catches the outside corner for a strike, one and one. So Kyle Jackson, you know, coming into this game, hyped up by. Head coach Jeff Duncan, one ball and two strikes. And for good reason, especially over the last three games, he's four for 10 with four RBIs and three walks, no strikeouts coming into the weekend. Two and two. Well, it was the fastball that he turned around his first time, Sam. That pitch right there looked like it stayed a little upstairs, the fastball, but as did that one. He's been the first couple of pitches. Looked like some off-speed slider change up. Trying to mix things up on him here. 3-2 pitch is fouled off to the right side. This is a, got the, the feeling of just a good matchup. Anytime Masters goes up against Kyle Jackson after this second time around. 3-2 is blasted into right field. Paulie Mancino is at the warning track and he makes the catch 
for a loud out number two. So Kyle Jackson twice has barreled up that baseball once over the yard, twice not so much. That was a great play by Pauly Mancino on the warning track. Had a little leaping catch right there. I had to kind of feel around for where he was at. He can feel that warning track under him. It can get a little, little anxious out there when you when you start to feel that warning track dirt, but good job of sticking with it. Josh Johnson at the plate for Kent State. Redshirt senior from Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. Flew out his first time up. 2-0. Dylan Masters has retired the last seven batters he's faced. Two and one. There is a lot of energy. We can't state that enough in both dugouts. This is a big series early on for both teams. 2-1, lifted into shallow left field. A.J. Roush makes the catch, and Dylan Masters has retired the last eight batters he has faced. We head to the bottom of the third inning right after this. All tied at one here at Bob Wren Stadium. Sino, the right fielder, a freshman from Westlake, Ohio. What does he have for an encore? Solo home run his first time up, his third homer of the season, and this is just his second time in the leadoff spot. All tied at one. Bottom of the third, back with Daniel Barnard. I'm Sam Hyman. Thanks for being with us in Athens, Ohio. Ball one from Jack Cartsonis, who works his third inning on the mound. Yeah, Paulie's first time around. He saw a couple of pitches and drove that last one he saw over the right center field wall into the shrubbery. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the fact that he's he's done that twice. He's gone opposite mm -hmm. field for homers twice this season already. Only a freshman. And the 2-0 hits Paulie Mancino. So that sets the table for another freshman, J.R. Nelson. So how about Craig Moore, third year head coach? He's got options, changing things around a bit here in this series from the start. One, two in the order, Pauly Mancino, a freshman, J.R. Nelson. He's been somewhat steady up there in the two spot, but two freshmen, one, two respectively in the batting order as Nelson fouls the first pitch back. Having two freshmen just at the top of the order, for that matter, just speaks volumes to the depth that these Bobcats have and just how good they are. It's such a benefit for the coaching staff, any coaching staff for that matter, to have depth and to have the depth that they do is just such a bonus for them, especially as they get into the middle stages and later on into the year. Got guys dealing with injuries. J.R. Nelson a little banged up right now, but he's playing through it. A lot of grit on both of these teams for that matter. Cartsonis on the mound battled his own injury respectively a couple years ago, missed yeah. pretty much the whole season. Yeah, missed the entire 2022 season. 
and had to deal with 15 months of rehab, according to head coach Jeff Duncan. Check on Mancino. Yeah, Jack Cartsonis going all the way back to the beginning of his college career. His freshman year was 2020. D3 John Carroll in Ohio. Very brief stint before Kent State. One and two. And we spoke to Jeff Duncan, the, the head coach of Kent State, about Jack. And Coach Duncan said he's got electric stuff, a fastball that rides between 92-94 with a slider changeup combo. And his growth this season, handling adversity mid-game. We'll pay attention to that once we get there as the one-two is bounced foul. All tied at one here in the bottom of the third inning. Game one of our three-game series. Two homers, one from each side so far. J.R. Nelson 0 for 1. The 1-2. One Popped up, shallow right center field. Jake Casey jogs in. One out. A good work right there by Casey to call off the second baseman, Hines, ranging backwards. At first, I thought that one might have fallen in no man's land. You had Hines retreating, Josh Johnson and Jake Casey both coming in. It looked like it might have had a little flare potential, but good play right there by Casey coming on strong. Time is called here, and an interesting development, perhaps, Training? Yeah. With injury timeout, maybe? Or not, injury Yeah, visit? Not, not exactly sure. Jack Cartsonis and pitching coach, legendary pitching coach Mike Birkbeck, who we'll talk about throughout the course of this weekend. Not 100% positive that is that there's something wrong with Cartsonis, but clearly... The athletic trainer and pitching coach Mike Birkbeck just checking something. We don't know what. Yeah, well, I don't. I I mentioned it last inning when Cartsonis was on the mound. A weird pitcher catcher visit, as well as the home plate umpire went out immediately. Yeah, after that wild pitch, as Paulie Mancino swipes second base to Ohio with two stolen bases already in this game. And that stolen base for Mancino, just his second of the season. And to your point earlier going in, Ohio had just nine stolen bases this year, two in this game. Aggressive against the top dogs in the conference. Yeah. Trying to steal some runs. Antle pops it up, shallow right field. Jake Casey is there, two down. Any way you can try to manufacture runs you gotta imagine Craig Moore's all over it this weekend you got a team that took care of you on their home field last year you suffered a, a three-game sweep up at Kent State last season you want to kind of get that get back so to say and any way possible small ball stealing bases Alex Finney fifth year from Oxford, Michigan, takes inside ball one. Finney walked his first time up. It's a great opportunity for the Bobcats. This is the second straight inning. They've had a runner at second. And it's 2-0 and to Alex Finney. He is pumping him in there. If he did have anything that he was dealing with when... Birkbeck and company went out to the mound to visit. Certainly doesn't seem to be. And that hit Alex Finney. So two hit by pitches in this inning from Jack Cartsonis. And that'll bring up Jackson Cawthorn. So a golden opportunity with two outs for the Bobcats. All tied at one as Cawthorn makes his way to the lefty batter's box. Well, I was going to say it doesn't seem to be affecting him too much, and then he proceeds to mm -hmm. just barely nick Finney right there, but looked like a slider that just stayed a little too far off the inside corner. I mean, I had to just barely get the threads. 
the fresh threads. Yep. Ohio's got some fresh home unis here in 2024. Watch out. Yeah, that ball landed a couple feet from one fan. Owen won the count to Jackson Cawthron, the catcher. 276 batting average coming into today. This is his eighth start of the season. Split time behind home plate. Strike two. Well, the two runners on base right now, Sam, both hit by pitches, as you said. Three free passes in this game from Cartsona is very unlike him. Ohio trying to capitalize while they can. 0-2 punched on the ground towards short. McNamara makes the play. And Ohio strands two runners. We go to the top of the fourth inning right after this. All tied at one. Great start to this series. Ohio and Kent State from Athens, Ohio. We'll be back in just a moment. Awesome crowd here in Athens, Ohio at Bob Wren Stadium. And to take you through the next two innings, Daniel, here we go. Thanks, Sam. Tim Moore will step up to the plate to lead off this top half of the fourth inning. Dylan Masters back out for his fourth inning of work. That first pitch just clips the outside corner. No balls and one strike. First time around, Tim hit by a pitch. Maybe not the worst thing you could do to a guy like this at the plate. Obviously, you never want to hit a guy at the plate or s surrender a free pass. Just on the outside corner once again and getting the call on that outside part of the plate are both pitchers here in this one. Absolutely, and I love the rhythm Dylan Masters is in right now. The one-two on the ground towards second, up with it and over to first in time is Alex Finney one away here in the top half of the fourth and that'll bring up Michael McNamara. He struck out his first time around swinging. I've been very impressed with Dylan Masters. You talked about this a little earlier, but his ability to bounce back after what could have been a disastrous start to this game in the first inning as that first pitch is outside ball one to give up a home run on the first pitch, you've really got to quickly forget about that because it's you know it's so early, literally the first pitch. And he has done just that in a huge rhythm right now. Absolutely, even count right here, one and one. He hasn't given up a hit since that first pitch of the game that was a home run for Kyle Jackson. That one tap foul, and he'll get ahead in the count, one ball, two strikes. Just one other base runner, and that, as I said just a minute ago, Tim Moore hit by a pitch in that first inning. And ever since then, it's been nine straight retired. Looking to continue the rhythm. Here's the one-two, and that one's popped up. That'll get out of play foul behind the screen. So we'll do it again, but Kent State coming in, swinging the bats really hot. They came off the Sunday game last weekend, 
scoring 17 runs against Central Michigan, and they doubled that up by scoring 27 <laughs> against Youngstown State. 44 runs in two games. I'd, I'd say the... Uh, the baseball guys were good. <laughs> the hitters the hitters were happy with that one, but so far today, a first pitch home run, but that's all they've been able to get going. I just don't want to get that announcer's jinx going here, but here's the 2-2. Two -two. That one scorched foul. It's off that top row of the Bobcat dugout. But like you said, Sam, it has been a very good bounce back outing so far here for Masters. Yeah, he's, he's starting to put together a couple of fine outings. Don't want to cap this outing just yet. There's still a lot left on the table for Dylan. But when I talked to Dylan after the last game, look, he, he's he been back and forth a bit, or at least last year, back and forth a bit from starter, reliever. Started the season as a relief pitcher, but he has the ability to start and set the tone. That one is drilled down the left field line, and it is going to stay fair. Just hugs that foul line and coasting into second base with a stand-up double. Michael McNamara bounces back after that first plate appearance when he struck out swinging, drills that one, and the Golden Flashes have a runner in scoring position. Dom Kibler going to step up to the plate now. He grounded out to end that first inning. Over to first base, Bryce Smith took it himself. And now he's got a chance to drive in a run from second base or, at worst, push him over to third. That first pitch stayed a little low. Dylan Masters, he's not going to overpower you with his fastball, mid-80s, but he, he's great at painting the corners here. This is a big challenge for him now with a runner in scoring position. How do you respond? The 1-0, a beautiful off-speed pitch right there. Looked like the slider just hugged that inside part of the strike zone. Evens yeah. the count, one ball, one strike. He loves that slider. Very confident when he throws it. That ball flared into center. Camped under it, Gideon Ansel. He makes the grab. Fires it back in quickly. It's going to keep the runner, Mac runner McNamara Put at second base, a big out right there for Dylan Masters. And that'll bring up Colton Schaller. He grounded out to second base to lead off the second inning. Masters trying to put up another zero on the board. The first pitch to Schaller is fouled back out of play. No balls, one strike. Both of the Hits surrendered so far today by Masters. Extra base hits. A home run and the double here in this fourth inning. Each team with a pair of hits. Each team with one run. The 0-1 stays in that right-handed batter's box. Just skips good block right there by Cawthron. Keep that one in front of him. Keep that runner at second. Every single 90-foot Increment matters. Swing and a miss right there. One ball and two strikes. Got him with the off speed again. Yeah, great job mixing pitches there for Dylan Masters. Keeping these Kent State hitters off balance. Big pitch coming. The one-two. Outside. Looked like he let go of that one a little too late. Masters, not a guy that's going to overpower you with the fastball, but he's been doing a great job with the off speed. Here's the 2 2. And he swung on and missed. Dylan Masters, all types of fired up as he heads off the mound. Strands McNamara at second. And he puts up another zero. We will head to the bottom half of the fourth. Will Ohio. Get back on the board, stay with us, and find out.
Cole Williams to lead off the bottom half of inning number four. The designated hitter today for the Bobcats grounded out to start the second inning. Looking for a change of fortunes here as he steps into face off with Cart Sonis back out for his fourth inning of work. A couple of zeros in his previous two innings. First pitch stays out off the outside corner. Yeah, he's had to battle though through those two innings, Daniel. Yes, two, he has. Ohio's left two runners on base and then one runner on base the last couple of frames. Uh, that one poked and drops foul just in front of Kyle Jackson, not able to get over there in time. Looked like he jammed him on that one. Got him right off the inside part of the bat. But yeah, Sam, it has not been easy for Cartsonis. This one drilled into left center field. That one is gonna drop. It's gonna roll just in front of the warning track, but Cole Williams slides into second base with a leadoff double. Here come the Bobcats. Just the second double of the season for Cole Williams, but it, it shouldn't have been a double, Daniel. Tim Orr, the left fielder, he didn't take the best route to that baseball. Thought that he was gonna be able to make that catch in left center field, so he, he did not curl around the ball and get in front of it and prevent it from going into the gap. Tough there for Kent State in the outfield, and now Ohio. The table is set. A.J. Roush with a runner in scoring position. Absolutely, Sam. Great backup right there. You might want to point out, too, by Josh Johnson. Able to get behind Tim Orr and keep that at just two bases. Now squaring to bunt, getting it down, hustling down the line. He's going to beat it out. A.J. Roush. A beautiful bunt. Moves the runner from second to third. And Roush on it first. The Bobcats with runners on the corners and nobody down. Bryce Smith steps up to the plate with a chance to do some damage. Big time bunt there from A.J. Roush. Bunt single, beautiful drag bunt. Ohio is not the team that's gonna overpower you at the plate every single time. They love the small ball. And how about this situation? First and third, no outs. There are so many options here for Bryce Smith. The, the first priority for Bryce Smith, put the ball in play. Do not strike out in this situation. Give the feelers some tough spots. What an opportunity. First pitch stays low for Bryce. Struggling coming into this one. Just a 222 batting average. But there's no better time than right now to turn your fortunes around. First and third, nobody down. Here's the 1-0. That one stays low as well. Two balls, no strikes. Smith coming into this game, five RBIs on the season. He's got number six, just 90 feet away. The 2-0. That one popped into the air. Is it going to get out of play? It barely does. Hugging the netting of the dugout, bouncing off of the top of the dugout. Two balls, one strike. Yeah, that was a very, if that net wasn't there, sometimes the net doesn't extend over the dugout. And yeah, Williams might be able to reach up right. and grab that one off exactly. the top of the dugout. And for Bryce Smith, I, I mentioned don't strike out, but also you want a productive out. Yep. You, you don't want an out where the runners stay put. The 2-1. On the ground towards second, double play ball to second. And they got him there, but the run's gonna score. A slow ground ball right there to Aiden Hines and his only out was at second. So a good play from him, but it plates a run. Cole Williams coming across to score and the Bobcats have the lead. It's two to one. Yeah, on that double play attempt there, Aiden Hines, his throw to, to the second base bag, Michael McNamara as that pitches in there for a strike. The throw to Michael McNamara at second base was not the best, and, and that's why McNamara couldn't exchange and, and throw it back to first for a, a possible double play. The throw was wide, a bit wide, and McNamara had to reach over across his body to catch that ball and at least secure one out. Well, quick two strikes here on Nick Dolan. Here's the 0-2, and he swings and misses at that one. 
for the first couple of runners, or the first couple of batters, I should say, reach base to start the inning. Cole Williams comes across to score, but the last two hitters, Cartsonis, wheeling and dealing, quickly two away. Bryce Smith leads off of first, top of the order, Pauly Mancino checks his swing, but it's called a strike. That was the fourth strikeout of the day for Cartsonis on Dolan, and Mancino drills one to right center field. It's gonna drop and it's gonna roll to the wall. Coming around third, he's gonna score easily. The throw's gonna go to third, sliding in with a triple. Pauly Mancino. He's got the hardest two hits of the cycle. A home run and a triple. He's also hit by a pitch. He's reached all three times. That one was huge. Extends the lead to two. It's three to one in the bottom of the fourth. J.R. Nelson steps to the plate now. A breakthrough by the Bobcats. The first pitch to Nelson pops straight up on the infield. Williams appears to be under it, and he makes the grab for out number three, but not before the Bobcats get two across. Three hits in the inning, two of them extra bases. None better than that Pauly Mancino RBI triple. Bobcats lead by two. Stay with us. We'll head to the fifth. Holly Mancino with an RBI triple to right center field in the bottom half of the fourth, extended the Bobcats lead. First pitch fouled away over in Pauly's direction. Pauly Mancino must love right field. He plays <laughs> right, right center field. Yeah, he plays right field. And it seems like every, at least for me, every game I've been at, he is hitting the ball to right field and homered to right, tripled to right, right center, right, whatever you want to call it, he loves the right side of the field. The 0-2 to Brody Williams stays low. A good waste pitch right there from Dylan Masters back out for his fifth inning of work. Here's the 1-2, one that one just barely got a piece of it. Did Williams, trickles in front of home plate, but it was foul. But all this talk about Pauly Mancino Dylan Masters with a great outing of work so far here today. Williams fouls another one off. He was able to work out of a jam last inning. A double from Michael McNamara, a one out double, and he was able to work out of that jam. Oh, good bounce back after that lead off home run. This one on the ground to third. Dolan up with it, strong throw across, and he got him. Yeah, love what we're seeing from Dylan Masters, who is also trending up in this game. 70 pitches coming into this inning. And, and again, he's not going to overpower you, but his placement with his pitches today has been terrific. And this is not just any old lineup. Kent State's lineup is very, very good. Very potent lineup. Jake Casey stepping up to the plate now. He's 0 for 1. Ground out to first, and he's going to do it again. 
A ball on the ground to Bryce Smith, takes care of that one easily. Three unassisted on the put out. Two away. So a couple of ground outs to first base for Casey. That'll bring up Aiden Hines. He struck out looking back in the third inning. He let off that third inning. There's the first pitch to him. Popped out of play foul. Only three base runners for the Golden Flashes so far today. A double, a home run, and a hit by pitch. That's all the noise they've been able to make. And now a little flare up the middle, fielded by the second baseman Finney, and he fires on the run to first base for out number three. Another one, two, three inning for Dylan Masters. Five strong innings of work. Just one run through the first five. Bobcats still lead it. Three to one. We'll be back after this. The power bat of Gideon Ansel steps up to the plate to lead off the bottom half of the fifth. He squares the bunt, pulls back, stays off the outside corner. One ball, no strikes. Cartsonis back out on the mound for the fifth inning. And Gideon lines one off the glove of Cartsonis. He retreats, slides, throws to first, but it's not in time. Almost a stellar play right there from Jack Cartsonis. Just tipped off the tip of his glove. And he almost made a stellar retreating out. Tried to get back after that one, wasn't able to. So Gideon Ansel on first to start the bottom half of the fifth. I'm sure that'll go down as a hit. Can't imagine that Absolutely. would be an error on Cartsonis. Now that's definitely a hit for, for Gideon Ansel who has now hit safely in every game he's played. Now 14, up to 14 straight games, all 14 games this season with at least one hit. Might have to dive back into some stats from last year, see if he's on an even longer hitting streak than 14. Swung on and missed right there by Finney. He's in an 0-2 hole. Gideon on first base. Not much of a threat to run. He hasn't stolen a base yet this season. Only one attempt. That pitch stays upstairs just above the numbers. But the center fielder for the Bobcats. Got to have some speed if you're going to play center field. The one-two stays low. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, I think the numbers when it comes to stolen bases can be a little bit deceiving for Ohio. Well, when you got a guy hitting only home runs at the plate. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have a chance to steal. Exactly. The 2-2 two -two is drilled into left field, ranging back, but he's under it. Did that ball hit the ground? I guess it didn't. They're going to say he caught it on the fly. Tim Orr misjudged that one a little bit, had to go down to his knee, made the catch basically an inch or two above the ground, but an out nonetheless. Yeah, he made a very strange path he took a very strange path to left center field on a double from Cole Williams and this time misjudged a fly ball maybe struggling to see the ball off the bat that one plunks Jackson Cothran he'll make his way down to first base another hit by pitch here in this one 
for Cardsonis. That's the third on the day for him. And he's also got a walk mixed in there as well. The fourth free pass on the ball game. Cardsonis looking in to get his sign, but timeout is gonna be called. And it looks like we're gonna get a call to the bullpen. First base umpire out towards the bullpen, motioning all the outfielders conversing. Looks like that's gonna be the end of the day for Jack Cartsonis. A strong outing for him, but he leaves with a couple of runners on base. Four and two thirds. We'll have some information on the new guy when we return. New pitcher on the mound for the Golden Flashes, Benny Roebuck coming on to replace Cartsonis. Sam, what do you got on Benny? Yeah, Benny Roebuck is a redshirt junior from Flower Mound, Texas. 6'1", 205 pounds. Decent start to the season for Benny with a 3.86 ERA across 14 innings. 10 strikeouts, four walks. He's actually started one game this season. So we'll see. First pitch from him stays off the outside corner. He is met by Cole Williams at the plate. Cole had the leadoff double in the bottom of the fourth inning. Boy, would a double right here be huge with a couple of runners on base. One ball, no strikes. Just on that inside corner. Evens the count at one. Great off speed there. Really nice off speed there. I don't think we're going to see the overpowering stuff that, that Cartsonis brought to the table, but we'll see something different here. And that one's going to be popped into the air, retreating on it, the third baseman, Jackson, and he makes the grab a big out number two right there for Roebuck. Retiring the first batter he faced, Cartsonis. In total on the day, four and a third innings pitched. He... Surrendered six hits on three runs, including a home run and a triple to Pauly Mancino. The extra base hits and the free passes were getting to Jack in this one. But the first pitch on the ground to second, a quick flip for the force out. They got Cothran there. Though A.J. Roush only saw one pitch, and the inning is over. The Bobcats strand two. We'll send it back to Sam here in the sixth inning when we return. Stay with us. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV.
Kyle Jackson leads off for Kent State. Homered back in the first inning. 3-1 lead for the Ohio Bobcats. Back underway to start the top of the sixth. And an off speed for Dylan Masters is in there for strike one. Back with Daniel Barnard. I'm Sam Hyman and our great crew today. Thanks for being with us. A very entertaining series opener between Ohio. Picked fifth in the MAC preseason poll. Kent State, the MAC favorites, coming off a 40-plus win season last year. Strike two from Masters. Dylan Masters, five shutout innings in his last start, his only other start of the season. Transitioning from bullpen to the starting spot. And he's looked very, very sharp. Here's the 2-2. Punched on the ground towards first, Bryce Smith. He's been busy over there, and he steps on the cushion for out number one in the top of the sixth inning. A good battle right there, once again, from Masters and Jackson. Jackson now one for three on the day. Masters facing this lineup for the third time here this afternoon and evening. And if you look down the left field line, Sam, nobody warming up for the Bobcats in the bullpen. Yeah, it's a good call. He, he's thrown 80 pitches, Daniel, and appears to not be done anytime soon with the way he's cruising out there on the island. Off speed, still sharp as nails, too. He showcased it already several times in this inning. First two pitches were both off speed, and they were beautiful. Josh Johnson skies it into center field. Gideon Antle hangs out there, and he makes the catch for out number two. These are quick outs as well, and this, this top of the order for Kent State is no joke. Kyle Jackson... Josh Johnson, Tim Orr, Michael McNamara, all guys, at least three out of the four who started 45-plus games last year, and Tim Orr, who was an elite Division II star in Ohio. Tiffin, as Gideon Antle slips in center field, that would have dropped anyways, though. Tim Orr has his first hit of the game. This is a, a tough lineup, and Dylan Masters has worked through it very nicely. Well, Tim Orr coming into this one, second in the MAC in terms of average, hitting 444, only behind Gideon Ansel. Yeah. He hit that one right up the middle to Gideon. Stands on first base, as he said. Gideon wouldn't have gotten to that one even if he hadn't slipped. A little bit of a damp outfield out there with the storms that moved through last night. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Bobcats. Here's another fly ball. Long run, Gideon Antle still going. This is the shortstop, J.R. Nelson, who comes back there to make the catch and retire the side. So Dylan Masters, six innings on the mound. It's his second longest outing of his career. We will head to the bottom of the sixth right after this. Ohio leads 3-1 in the series opener. Bottom of the sixth we go, Bryce Smith, Nick Dolan, Paulie Mancino, 8-9-1 and one due up here in the home half of the sixth inning. Back with Daniel Barnard, I'm Sam Hyman. Uh, Benny Roebuck, relief pitcher, fires a first pitch fastball in there for strike one. And Bryce Smith, his last time around, grounded into a fielder's choice, but got an RBI in 
doing so. He came around to score, too, on the Pauly Mancino triple. He hit in Cole Williams, made it 2-1, to one, gave the Bobcats the lead, and he came around to extend it as well. Graduate student from Virginia Beach. One ball and two strikes. Bryce Smith in uh, 2022, uh, 2024 this season, hitting 222. This is his eighth start of the season. The Marymount University transfer, Division Three school in Arlington, Virginia. One, two, fought off. I asked Coach Moore about Bryce a couple of weeks ago, and Coach said he's starting to figure out who he is as a hitter. A guy that's going to be more middle away. He won't try. He won't try and do too much. One, two, grounded to short. Michael McNamara, easy skip throw over to first. One up and one down in the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll bring up Nick Dolan, the third baseman. What a competitive game this has been so far. Ohio coming into this game, five and nine, one and two in the MAC. Dropped two out of three to, to Northern Illinois last week in a hard fought series. One of those games went into 11 innings. And Ohio felt like that one got away from them late. So to be in this position right now to perhaps take game one against the MAC favorites, you have got to be pleased if you're Coach Moore. But the job is not done. There's still innings to be played. Absolutely, Sam. Still four innings to be played. Or I guess three innings. Three and a half innings. If I can get my math right. Nick Dolan... Checked his swing and went around according to Bryce McCalla. So one ball and two strikes to Ohio's nine hitter. Who's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts and just misses outside on the curveball. Two and two. Well, as I said before we went to break, the last half inning, nobody warming up in that Bobcat bullpen. So it seems like Dylan Masters is going to be back out for... He broke his bat. That is rare. A metal bat snapped in half, and Nick Dolan is safe at first base. My goodness. You don't see that too much, Sam. I don't think I've ever seen a metal bat snap in half. Or did he just let go on of a it? swing? No, it's it's snapped oh, in it's half. Oh, it snapped. Yes. <laughs> That's a first for me. I, I've I've seen it on videos before. I've never seen it in person. That's so long to that one. <laughs> can hang that one up. There have been moments in baseball professionally, <laughs> whether it's professional or college baseball, where you'll see a batter snap a bat on their leg, but you, you typically see a wooden bat, <laughs> oh, not, yeah. not a, a metal bat, but on a swing, too. I, I've never seen that before. I got way in on the hands. Nick Dolan takes off. Here's a bunt from Pauly Mancino, and Robach throws to first in time. Sack bunt. Ohio has bunted a couple of times in this game. Nick Dolan, by the way, that's a that's a single, too, for him. Mm -hmm. uh, Infield single. It's not an error, so Dolan over to second base after Pauly Mancino's sack bunt. What a day for Mancino. Very productive. Homer, triple, hit by pitch, and now a sack bunt. Here's J.R. Nelson with two outs and a runner at second base. Strike one to Nelson. By the way, the final line on Jack Cartsonis, the starter for Kent State, bounced after four and a third inning, six hits, three runs, all earned. One walk, four strikeouts, 77 total pitches, 48 of them for strikes. Curveball is blasted down the left field line. That ball is one-hopping the wall as we speak. J.R. Nelson stumbles into second base with... A two-out double, and he drives in Nick Dolan. Crit around and laces it down the line, extending that Bobcat lead. You can never have a big enough lead, and Gideon Ansel coming to the plate, a dangerous two-out hitter. Gideon Ansel one for three with an infield single. Ohio leads 4-1 here in the bottom of the sixth inning against the Mac preseason favorites, Kent State. And misses outside, ball one. 
Well, you can look back at that Pauly Mancino sacrifice blunt now as being huge. Obviously, Dolan was on the move on the pitch. He might have stolen it regardless. Popped up behind home plate and heading towards our territory. Luckily, didn't hit anybody. Came close. Yeah. Getting out of the way. But yeah, Nick Dolan was on the move on that sacrifice bunt, so he may have very well stolen second base had the bunt not gotten down. But the sack bunt is, is what it is and got him over and he came around to score. Could prove big at the end of this one. One ball and one strike. And that is inside a two and one. Ohio, four runs on eight hits, no errors. Kent State, one run on three hits. No errors. So the offense has come to play today for Craig Moore's team. 2-1. Pinches inside. Three balls and one strike to Gideon Antle. One of the best hitters, if not the best hitter right now. Statistically, he is. He's got the best batting average at 458 in the MAC. That's 24th in the country. 3-1 is outside, ball four, and Antle is aboard for the second time. He's made a ton of adjustments. He's also healthy this season. We spoke to him a couple of days ago, and Gideon told us that he just feels much more in rhythm because he had a full preseason. He had a hamstring injury he dealt with last year and didn't travel with the team on opening weekend. So to be fully in rhythm, in tune with everything, from the jump this season in his second year with the Bobcats has proven to be a huge difference as Alex Finney takes outside ball one. Well, quite a few free passes in this one. I think if I'm right off the top of my head, that's number five in total from Kent State. Two walks and three hit by pitches. So, And that those three yeah. hit by pitches ties a season high for their pitchers as well. Going back to Jacksonville State just a couple of weeks ago, they hit three batters in that one. Uncharacteristic. And they all came from Cartsonis. We were talking about the Kent State pitching staff coming into today and 16 innings last weekend for the three starters. Only one earned run allowed. But four earned runs given up by these pitchers. Three earned runs from the starter, Cartsonis. Two balls and two strikes to Finney. 286 on the season, and he skies that foul to the right side. We'll do it again. 13th start this year for Finney today. 40 starts last year, hit 280. Each year he's gotten more and more play, more and more opportunities to play. Only played in 12 games in his first two seasons here. And a good at bat from the fifth year senior. Well Sam, the Bobcats, while they do have the lead four to one, they've left quite a few runners on base in this one too. Eight of them to be exact. Finney trying to get one or both of the runners around here and not add to that number. 2-2 two, two high, 3-2. Three and two. Alex Finney has walked. He's been hit by a pitch and flew out to left field. Ohio's dugout gets rowdy for a 3-2 that has to wait. Hold the phone. Well, both runners will be on the move here. 3-2, two, two outs. So Roebuck just checking Back there on Nelson. Payoff pitch, and Finney cracks it up in the air down the right field line. Jake Casey waits, waits, and makes the play to retire the side. So the Bobcats strand two, but get another run across. Some small ball. Pauly Mancina sack bunt. J.R. Nelson RBI double. Ohio leads 4-1, heading to the seventh. We'll step aside and come back in just a moment here from Southeast Ohio.
a masterful outing so far for Mr. Dylan Masters as he starts the seventh with a first pitch strike. Back with Daniel Barnard, I'm Sam Hyman and our great crew. 4-1 lead for the Bobcats against the MAC preseason favorites. Kent State historically have been the talk of the Mid-American Conference on the diamond over the last decade plus, dating back to Kent State's College World Series appearance in 2012. Jeff Duncan in his 10th season as the head coach. But it's Ohio with a 4-1 lead. Thanks to Dylan Masters, who's kept this offense at bay. As the count remains, nothing in two. 93 pitches for Dylan Masters. There is activity now down the left field line in Ohio's bullpen. Dom Kibler at the plate, and he swings and misses. Strike three. And that is Dylan's fifth strikeout of the game. One away. Dylan Masters continues to dominate these golden flashes hitters here in this one. He hasn't allowed one batter in the six, seven, eight, nine to reach base. Uh, the bottom of the order he has had his way with so far in this one, Sam, and I got to believe that was a big factor in Coach Moore letting him go back out there for his seventh inning of work. I think you talked about it last inning, his longest outing of his career, seven innings. And this is seventh inning of work. Yeah, he threw seven innings last year against Ball State, May 5th. His longest outing this season, five innings. Of course, this is only his second start of the season. Two balls and one strike to a new hitter at the plate. It's Ripken Reese, who is pinch hitting for Colton Schaller. And Reese pops it up foul to the right side. Ripken Reese. We spoke to Coach Duncan about Ripken, and Coach Duncan told us he's got tons of potential, can play multiple positions, second base, third base catcher. He's been in and out of the lineup though this season. Coach is confident that Ripken will figure it out though moving forward. J.R. Nelson has figured it out from the jump. The freshman shortstop with a terrific play for out number two in the top of the seventh inning. Those look really routine to our eye up here in the booth and to a fan's eye, it looks like a play that, oh yeah, that one's easy. You should just make that every single time. But those hops on that turf, that can get tough. That was a really nice play right there from Nelson to stay with it all the way into his glove and across the diamond. Strike one to Brody Williams, the catcher 0 for 2. Boy, I tell you what, Dylan Masters just looking at the scorecard. He has absolutely dominated Kent State's bottom of the order. The seven, eight, and nine hitters are a combined 0 for 6. Brody Williams, Jake Casey, and Aiden Hines. That just misses two and one. I asked Dylan Masters last weekend after his five shutout innings against NIU, what's your biggest strength? And he said, my confidence. You think his confidence is high right now or what? <laughs> I, I think it's sky high. If I was him, I would be... Uh quite confident out there on the mound. I wow. wouldn't want to come out. That that pitch barely misses outside. Ball four, the first walk of the game, a two out walk to Brody Williams on a very close call. First base runner to reach, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the order for Kent State today. And I was just about to talk about how he hasn't given up a walk at all today. Mm. He has hit a batter, but He's been limiting the free passes, and that's something that Ohio struggled with this season, are surrendering free passes. Their most hit batters in a game being four, and the most walks being 11 against Campbell back early in the season. He's getting pinched right now. One ball and one strike to Jake Casey, who has struggled this year, 197 batting average. And Casey rocks this one up in the air to dead center field, up, up, and away. 
Bye bye baseball, a two run blast for Jake Casey and this game just got a whole lot more interesting. Four to three now, the flash is down by just a run. Mm, that hurts. If your master's on the mound right there, as you said, a masterful outing for him and he gives up that home run that went over the batter's eye, Sam. 4.05 to center field, and he cleared that probably by 50 feet. <laughs> you hear the, you hear the uh, phrase 450 dead center thrown around quite a bit in baseball. That one very well may have been 450 dead center. And he gave that one a ride. Yeah, tough, tough pill to swallow for Dylan Masters, who's thrown 107 pitches. Tim Brown, pitching coach for Ohio, is now speaking with Dylan. And Jackson Cawthorn. Jake Casey, I, I just said that he has been struggling this season, only hitting 197. He had a team high, 12 homers last year. That was all, that was his third home run of the season in his 17th start. So, Well, I talked about it ooh. earlier, Sam. He, Casey, one of the guys that head coach Jeff Duncan touched on during our talk with him saying that they're really trying to get him going at the plate. I'd say that's getting going right there. So here's another pinch hitter, Connor Ashby, who has only produced four hits on the season. He's four for 16 in nine games. Junior from North Canton, Ohio. One ball and one strike. Coming off a... Good couple of games, two for five against Youngstown State in the midweek game, and then the game against Central Michigan on March 9th went one for one. Two balls and one strike. Oh, we are getting treated to a very, yes. very good game here today, Sam. Fouled yeah. off, two and two. Dylan Masters still can escape. Protecting the lead, that now is just one. Good old fashioned Mac baseball. Two balls and two strikes with two down in the top of the seventh. We'll do it again. Th this game could not be more exciting, I think. It it's been a clean game, no errors so far. We've go seen ahead and knock on wood right there. Yeah, we've seen some home runs. I'm not superstitious. <laughs> You're talking to someone who's not superstitious. 2-2 <laughs> two -two is down and in. Three balls and two strikes. And we've also seen timely at bats and discipline at bats. Here's another one from Connor Ashby, fresh off the pine. The pinch hitter. Wow. That, that's... Unbelievable. Ball four. It looked like it was right down the middle from where we're sitting. Now, we're not as close as home plate umpire Steve Miller is, so we definitely aren't the ones. That's why we're not making the call. But <laughs> Coach Moore put his hands up in the air. He was a bit shell-shocked as well. So a two-out walk for Connor Ashby. Looks like it's going to be the end of the day. Yeah, Tim Brown will take the ball from Dylan Masters. Definitely not the way he wanted to exit this game, but we'll get a standing ovation from the Ohio fans here today after six and two-thirds innings of hard work on the hill. We'll step aside. Pitching change. It's 4-3. Ohio leads Kent State in the top of the seventh inning. Come back and join us in just a moment from Athens.
Zach Weber, new pitcher for Ohio, as we are back top of the seventh, two down. Jake Casey made this game a lot more interesting with a two-run homer to make it a one-run game. This is Kyle Jackson, Kent State's leadoff hitter at the plate. Zach Weber is having a terrific season so far out of the bullpen. Daniel threw five outings, a 1-5-9 ERA. Popped up, third base side, Nick Dolan camps out there and he makes the catch for out number three. So on just a couple of brief moments for Zach Weber in his appearance thus far, quickly retires Jackson. We go to the bottom of the seventh, one run game, Ohio in front, four to three. New pitcher for Kent State as we welcome you back. Bottom of the seventh inning. Hope you had a chance to stand up and stretch off your couch or chair or whatever you're hanging out with us with. Peyton Carrico is the new pitcher. 4-3 lead for the Bobcats. First pitch low, ball one to Jackson Cawthorn. So, Daniel, the number is on Peyton. What do you have? Well, Carrico coming in. This will be his sixth appearance on the season. That one tap foul. He's got a 3.18 ERA, over 5.2 innings of work. He's got four strikeouts. His most in a game being two. That came in his season debut. I think he went around at the plate right there. One ball, two strikes. In his season debut against UNC Wilmington, he had two strikeouts in that one over an inning and a third. His longest outing of the year came against Troy when he worked two innings. Oh, he's had some solid outings, not as many innings as some of these other guys that we've seen come out of the bullpen and obviously start here today, but the South Paul getting some work in here at Bob Wren. Yeah, not a surprise to see Kent State go with a, a southpaw out of the bullpen in this situation. Jackson Cawthorn, a lefty. Cole Williams, who's on deck, is also a lefty. So looking for that left-on-left -left matchup. And Cawthorn with a heck of an A-B to start the bottom of the seventh inning. Three balls and two strikes. Ohio out hitting Kent State 8-4. to four. A couple of walks hurt Ohio in that seventh inning. Jake Casey's homer was with Brody Williams on base who walked. The payoff pitch, breaking ball, ring him up, strike three. Oh. Uh, uh, hit the inside part of the door. And <laughs> Jackson Cawthorn can't believe it, strike three. Oh, I can't believe the movement I just saw on that pitch. That was an unreal slider, especially in a 3-2 count. You gotta have a lot of confidence to go to a pitch like that. 
when you got three balls on a hitter, and we're already going to get a mound visit. Yeah, interesting. I thought Kent State would keep the southpaw, Kate and Carrico, out there. I think this may, may just be a quick conversation. Mike just Birkbeck, never report. question what Mike Birkbeck does. He has been the associate head coach at Kent State, pitching coach, since 2004. He's been here longer than head coach Jeff Duncan. Dates back to the Scott Strickland days, who was, of course, the head coach at, at Kent State when the Golden Flashes made it to the College World Series in 2012. We asked Coach Duncan, current Kent State head coach, what, what are some things you've learned from Mike Birkbeck over the years? And Coach Duncan said he has tremendous feel for all pitchers with different styles, ability to work with different style pitchers. He's got a calm and tense demeanor at the same time. And there have been so many good pitchers to come through Kent State's program over the years. Eric Lauer, Jake Latz, two pitchers that Coach Duncan brought up about how Coach Birkbeck can work with different style pitchers. And we're seeing a really good start out of the pen here from Peyton Carrico. He struck out Jackson Cawthron and has Cole Williams in a one ball, two strike count. Well, ever since Birkbeck came out, granted it's only been three pitches, but he has been working away a lot right here on Williams. One, two, Cole Williams smashes it to dead center field. Josh Johnson right there for the second out. Left that one a little more over the plate. He got a hold of it, but maybe the conversation, one of work away from this guy. He likes to pull the ball. Wow. Cole Williams at the plate earlier today, he was actually, he actually pulled his head a couple times trying to pull the baseball, so... Maybe you notice that, and he's back right back out to the mound again. Yeah, this time a pitching change, so it was just to face the two lefties. Peyton Carrico, job well done. His destination is now the dugout after two batters up, two batters down. We will step aside. What a game. 4-3 Ohio in front. Series opener between the Bobcats and the Golden Flashes. We will resume the bottom of the seventh right after this. New pitcher for Kent State with two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning is the right-hander Jordan Kalenda. Kalenda with a K taking over after just two-thirds of an inning for Peyton Carrico. He did his job against the two lefties. We spoke to Coach Duncan about the bullpen. Jordan Kalenda, a guy, according to Coach Duncan, is making some adjustments right now to be one of those late inning guys. Here we are in the bottom of the seventh. He and Gavin Jones, sort of the go-to guys when, when things get tight down the stretch. The numbers can be deceiving on Kalenda, Sam. He struggled early on in the year, and as you said, trying to make some changes. A little hiccups can come with it. He gave up three in his season debut, but Last time out against Central Michigan, he worked a clean inning. Zero runs against the Chips. A.J. Rouse went around strike two. And, yeah, to your point, has improved recently. Only one earned run allowed over his last two outings. That ERA sits at 11-12, but it is deceiving. A.J. Rouse didn't go around. Ball four. Big call. Big call. Jeff Duncan over in the... First base dugout is hot right now, not happy. And that extends the inning for Ohio. The whole 
Kent State infield and even the outfielders moving towards the dugout on that one. They thought that was surefire that he went around, but inning's going to extend. Bryce Smith takes a strike, stamped right down the middle, nothing and one. And if nothing else in this inning, Sam, if Bryce Smith or even if Nick Dolan comes to the plate and doesn't reach, you could look at it as big because it gets the top of the order to the plate at minimum in that bottom of the eighth inning, an inning that could be key in getting some insurance runs for the Bobcats. Going to have your sluggers come into the plate. And there goes A.J. Roush. Pitches outside for a ball, skips to second, and A.J. Roush steals second base. Ohio has three stolen bases in this game. Roush with his third stolen bag on the season here in this one. 12th total on the team. Oh, these throws are close from Williams behind the plate. Kalenda delivers, and that is strike two. Ohio has lost three of its last four. Kent State comes in, winners of seven of their last eight games. Kent State, the MAC preseason favorites. Ohio picked fifth in the league. 1-2. This is a, a real statement series for Ohio, especially in the series opener to try and set the tone, send a message to one of the best teams in the Mid-American Conference. Bryce Smith, RBI on a fielder's choice in the fourth inning. A couple of ground outs. One, two, swing and a miss, strike three. Kalenda ends the frame. Ohio strands another runner. Ohio stranded at least one runner in, on the bases every inning in this game. Bobcats lead four to three. We go to the eighth. Whew. A lot to be decided. Come Drop in. Yeah, come back and join us right after this. Top of the eighth inning, here we go. 4-3 game, Ohio in front. Josh Johnson, the number two hitter, looks at a ball, tried to bunt, and then decided not to. One ball and no strikes. The redshirt senior 0 for 3 today. And that is a strike, one and one. Josh Johnson hitting 333 this season, second best average on the team in 16 starts. And he's on a 10-game hitting streak that is in jeopardy right now, 2-1. and one. Second best to none other than the man on deck. Yep. Two, three, four hitters in the order this eighth inning for Kent State. Zach Weber on the mound, tasked with a challenge. Indeed. It is Josh Johnson who, according to Coach Duncan, is our table setter. Full count and a good at-bat here. Johnson has been great in his career at Kent State. Last season, a 313 batting average across 55 starts. Two years ago, 371 batting average to lead the team. 
Payoff is just nubbed towards the left side of the mound. Look at Weber off the mound, throws to first, and it's off of Bryce Smith's glove. He, he would have had the play. It would have been an out, and Smith couldn't squeeze it. I'm not sure, too, if Bryce Smith, did you get a look? Was he Would he have been able to keep his foot on the bag he if was, he made that catch? He was definitely still on the bag, but that was tough for Smith because you got Johnson busting it down the line. And you got Smith at first base trying to catch it and pull it away real quick to make sure he doesn't get hit by Smith or I'm sorry by Johnson. So it's just a lot of it's a lot of bang bang down there at first play at first base. So the official ruling is an error on pitcher Zach Weber who threw it a little bit too wide for Smith to secure it, and Josh Johnson who is a threat to steal. He has 12 stolen bases in 14 attempts. Tim Orr at the plate, second in the MAC in batting average. One of the things we highlighted earlier coming into this game, this matchup features two of the top hitters in the Mid-American Conference. Ohio's Gideon Antle, one, and two, Tim Orr. The Tiffin transfer, and he scoots that underneath J.R. Nelson's glove. Johnson slides into third. Kent State is in business. Runners at the corners with nobody out in the top of the eighth inning. Mm, that's wow. tough. You've had such good fielding all day long from both teams for that matter. And an errant throw from Weber on the first at bat of the inning. And that ball was absolutely scorched. It I was. mean, J.R. Nelson, he was in front of it, but that is a tough pick right there. And got right under the glove, it looked like. And. Now we're going to get a mound visit here. Runners on the corners, nobody down with the middle of the order coming up. This spells danger for the Bobcats, but Zach Weber, one of the better pitchers in the Mid-American Conference, he actually leads the Mid-American Conference in ERA, Sam. That He has been trustworthy on the mound. We'll see if he can't work around Guys on first and third. When you get into a situation like this, it's all about damage control. It's not necessarily about can you get out of it without giving anything up. It's about how much can you limit with nobody down and runners on first and third. You got to imagine right now for Weber, it's get out of this inning at worst tie game. At best, obviously, you retire these next three hitters and that run doesn't cross, but... It'll be tough. With so, four, five, and six. I mean. Yeah, so by the way, that hit, that ball that Timor hit to J.R. Nelson, that's not an error on J.R. Nelson. It, it goes down as a single, and I think I agree with that call because J.R. thought that ball was going to bounce. He was in position, and, and that ball was hit so hard that it didn't have any high bounce to it. It just skid, skidded underneath. He'll so, tell you he should have made the play, but that was a really tough play. Yeah, really tough play. I think if, if anybody thinks that, you know, he should have made the play, it's J.R. Nelson because <laughs> he's, he is as intense as it gets over at shortstop. I spoke to Gideon Antle about him, and he certainly wishes he could have that back as McNamara shoots it into right field. Mancino makes the catch. He's got a heck of an arm. Play at the plate, cut off. Sack fly RBI, and we are tied at four in the top of the eighth inning. Sam, don't let that play go unnoticed. That ball was scorched as well. Mancino getting over to that. He looks like he's a little gimpy out there in right field. I don't know if you're seeing that too. He yeah, he bent over right now, but that was some kind of play. He had to get on his horse for that one. Not sure if anybody else is noticing it in that Ohio dugout, but he looks a little... A little hurt coming up after that, but oh, that was a huge play. When he caught that ball, he, he he sort of bent down, shrugged down. I don't know if he tweaked something in his back or what, but Pauly remains out there in right field. Dom Kibler at the plate. There goes the runner, hit and run. And how about that? Tim Moore hops over the baseball, and there's out number two. So Could have been a hit and run right there. Yeah, I think it was, definitely. And that's what got Tim Ward to second base in scoring position to try and put Kent State in a position to take the lead. 
Almost came back to bite him. Almost hit him in the middle. Yeah, of the exactly. Bat. Ball hits a. If a live ball hits a runner off the bat, it's considered an out. Or with the hops, able to avoid that. Two out threat. And that is just outside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Zach Weber delivers. And that is a strike. So Ripken Reese, who pinch hit the last half inning, he is a switch hitter. So he batted from the right side last time up. Here he is from the left side. That's another advantage that Jeff Duncan has at his disposal when he puts Ripken Reese in the game as he can hit from both sides of the plate. Last time up, Ripken grounded out. The go-ahead run is at second base with two outs. Big spot, Zach Weber. Fly ball into shallow left field. Playable, A.J. Roush. And A.J. Roush makes the catch to retire the side. Damage control. Indeed, damage control indeed. Zach Weber limits the damage. We are tied at four heading into the bottom of the eighth inning. In the series opener between the Bobcats and Golden Flashes, we will see you on the other side. Bottom eight next. Nick Dolan stands in, bottom of the eighth inning, one for three at the plate against Jordan Kalenda this time, and he drops down a beautiful drag bunt up the third baseline, and Nick Dolan for the second time today, an infield single, this time a bunt for the redshirt junior from Pittsburgh, PA, to set the tone here in the home half of the eighth. Well, I talked about it earlier, Sam. When you get a team like Kent State, coming into your house in the second conference series of the season. You're gonna do anything you can to try and gain an edge. Ohio way more aggressive on the bases so far today. And now the small ball coming into play with the top of the order coming up. Looks like a pinch hitter though. Yes, pinch hitter for Pauly Mancino. So there was something that maybe Pauly aggravated in right field. It's Trenton Newer who bunts Foul. That was close. Foul ball, thankfully there, if you're an Ohio fan watching. Trenton Newer is only batting for the sixth time. He is two for five at the plate with an RBI. Did play in that Moorhead State game midweek, but. He played with the Copperheads last summer. Yeah, graduate student. Squares the bun again. And pulls back. So, wow, that's, that's a big story. Hopefully it's nothing serious for Pauly Mancino, who, you know, we, we don't know exactly what happened. I don't but want to speculate or anything yeah, like that. Definitely but. a surprise to not see him out there for another A-B. One ball and two strikes. Newer couldn't get the bunt down. So Newer bunts two of them foul. 
Uh, how about he just pulls back and swings away, drive one into the gap right here? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Ohio fans on the edge of their seat right now. Jordan Kalenda came in the seventh. One of the late inning guys for Jeff Duncan's team. One, two is fought off, foul to the right side. We'll do it again. A good battle right here. J.R. Nelson and Gideon Ansel awaits. Some big time hitters in this Bobcat lineup trying to get Nick Dolan over to second base in scoring position for him. Take that lead at end of the ninth, try to slam the door shut. Kalenda really focused over there at first base with Nick Dolan. Nobody out. Dolan again dives back to the bag. Well, the Bobcats have shown so far today they want to be aggressive. They want to play small ball. Tried to bunt him over. Wasn't able to do that. 1-2 is bashed down the right field line. Foul. Heck of an at-bat here from... Trenton Newer, who's just two for five on the season. He's barely played in his entire college career. Only played a couple of games last year. Didn't play the last, the two seasons prior to that. One, two, and it hits Newer on Ooh, the hand. Got him on the hand. Kent State thought it hit the end of the bat, and which would then have been a foul ball. That's not the case. And Ohio has runners at first and second with nobody out. And the batter is J.R. Nelson. Well, that's a fourth hit by pitch of the game, and it's going to set the single season high for Kent State pitching. Three of them by Cartsonis earlier in the ball game, and now one here. The Bobcats with a prime opportunity to take the lead here in this eighth inning. Two, three, four coming to the plate with runners on first and second. Nobody away. J.R. Nelson. Strap in. <laughs> J.R. Nelson, 327 batting average coming into today. Doubled his last time up. There's a bunt attempt. Ball one. J.R. Nelson, a freshman from Vernon Hills, Illinois. Gideon Antle, who's on deck, told me that JR has incredible work ethic and talent. He reminds me of myself, Gideon said, when oh, he was nice a freshman. Bunt. What nice a bunt. bunt. And it's a bunt single for JR Nelson. The bases are loaded. Perfect placement. Everybody is safe. The fans <laughs> telling us for sure. Make sure you know that everybody's safe. And Gideon Ansel, I mean, what a situation, what a moment right here. You're just leisurely watching back at home. Lock in on your screen right now. This is big time for a big time hitter. Gideon Ansel rips it into left field. Clutch from the max best hitter in 2024. Ohio leads five to four on the RBI single from Gideon. Well, I hope you took the advice. I hope you locked in on the screen because Gideon wasted no time, turned the first pitch around and gave the Bobcats the lead. They surrendered the lead in the top half and they take it right back in the bottom half. And Sam, I don't think they're done. Bases loaded, nobody out, and you got four, five, six coming to the plate, and that's going to end the day on the hill for Carrico. Jordan Kalenda. Or Kalenda, I apologize, yeah. for Kalenda. Yeah, Jordan Kalenda, his day is done, but some tremendous small ball from the Bobcats. Two bunt singles from Ohio in this inning. Pauly Mancino unable to bat in this inning, a pinch hitter. Trenton Newer got hit by a pitch. He had a great A-B, so we will step aside. 5-4 lead, pitching change. Bottom of the eighth inning concludes after this.
Gideon Antle just broke the 4-4 tie on the first pitch he saw on the bottom of the eighth inning with the bases loaded. RBI single. The bases are still loaded. Nobody out. 5-4 Ohio new pitcher Gavin Jones, the Alabama transfer, redshirt freshman from North Royalton, Ohio, 6'3", 210 pounds. Fires the first pitch low to Alex Finney, ball one. Jones didn't play last year. He redshirted, but has electric stuff, according to head coach Jeff Duncan. We'll see how electric it is, though, in this challenging situation. Two balls and no strikes. Well, Sam, this is a guy you want on the bump in this type of situation. Over his last three outings, he's gone three and a third inning, and he struck out eight batters over those three and a third. It has been dynamic for him on the bump. No runs given up either over his last three times out. Yeah, he's really been able to turn it around, and Kent State... In a tough spot, 3-0 is on the inside corner for a strike, 3-1. and one. We, we talked about some of the missing pieces this year for Kent State who depart, that departed last season's team, Mitchell Scott. I'm sure Kent State's missing the All-American reliever from a season ago right at this moment. Scott had a dazzling 1-9-4 ERA and 15 saves last year for Scott. 65 strikeouts to 16 walks. A big loss uh, from the bullpen, certainly. But Gavin Jones delivers and cashes in. One up, one down. First batter, Jones faces a strikeout. Oh, that is big right there for Jones to fall behind 3-0 and and be able to battle back with the bases loaded. Nowhere to put him. That's big time stuff right there for him. He hasn't walked a guy since he faced Troy back on the 28th of February. He walked three in that one. And that's the last time he gave up a run too, Sam. Has gotten better and better as the year has gone on. And to also clarify, you know, Troy, Louisiana Tech, UNC Wilmington, those are all three teams that are projected to make a regional so a really difficult schedule early on for Jeff Duncan's club. One ball and one strike to Jackson Cawthron, the junior catcher from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, looking for his first hit of the game. Two and one. Bottom of the eighth inning, Ohio is three outs away from winning this game, but looking to add more because no lead is safe. It's been tight since first pitch. At four o'clock, the two one. Outside, three and one. Nowhere to put him. Well, Gavin Jones was strong, focused with a three ball count. Last time up, Alex Finney, he struck him out. Here's the three one. And this time, not able to. A bases loaded walk. And the Bobcats lead six to four. Great at bat right there from Cawthron. Able to drive in, well, I guess maybe not necessarily drive in, but he gets credit for the RBI, yep. able to bring in another run. That's a huge insurance run right there for the Bobcats. And still, innings not done yet. Cole Williams, the Marshall transfer, takes ball one. Senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Cole Williams is one for four in this game with a double and a run scored. J.R. Nelson at third, Gideon Antle at second, Jackson Cawthron at first. Two balls and no strikes. So Gavin Jones, the Alabama transfer, three batters he's faced so far. He's been behind in the count to start all of them. Two and one. I love the aggressiveness at the plate right there from Williams. If you get your pitch, take a rip at it. He struggled, Jones has, to find the zone so far in this one. A lot of times you'll see hitters in an auto take right there, especially 
after Jones falls behind 3-0, comes back to strike out Finney, but then he surrenders the walk to Cothran. A lot of nerves, a lot of inconsistency on the mound right now. But I love the aggressiveness. Try to find yours. Three and one. Three batters faced. Three, three ball counts. And you talked about how Gavin Jones, he three outings coming in. His prior three outings, he hadn't walked a batter. 3-1 pitch is outside, ball four. Back-to-back -back walks. And the Bobcats lead seven to four. So these are, these are massive insurance runs, Daniel. And they're not coming via a hit. They're, they're gifted. Well, I gotta imagine when Jeff Duncan made the move, he brought in Gavin Jones because he is the guy that's gonna get you strikeouts. And that's exactly what you need in a situation like this with the bases loaded. Got the first guy, got Alex Finney on the strikeout, but ever since then, well, even during that at bat, he struggled with location and now two walks, and that's two more than his last three appearances combined. Like we said, it's now seven walks on the season. He surrendered two to Louisiana Tech and three to Troy. And he's in danger of tying his season high. A.J. Roush stands in. With Roush at the plate, Bryce Smith on deck. And the Bobcats will have batted through. The order, that is. A.J. Roush went around, strike one. Seven to four lead for Ohio. Bobcats have out hit Kent State 11 to five. And that's a strike on the inside corner. Nothing and two. Kent State coming in, winners of seven of their last eight games. Ohio coming in, losses in three of their last four, including losing that series opener in the MAC to. Northern Illinois, a team picked to finish towards the bottom of the league. And what a response this would be in the first game of this series against Kent State. The MAC preseason favorites who won 40 plus games last year. One two is tipped into the mitt. Brody Williams strike. And that is out number two. It goes without saying, that's a big strikeout and a big out number two, an unproductive out, something that Roush certainly wasn't hoping for at the plate, but now it's up to Bryce Smith if the Bobcats are going to get any more. Ball one. Sharp eye right there, that was close. Just off the outside corner with the fastball. Jones delivers and the heater flames right by Bryce Smith. One ball and one strike. Well, Coach Duncan of Kent State told us before the weekend, Ohio is really, really solid. We are prepared for a competitive matchup. Certainly has been one in the first of three games this weekend. Kent State swept Ohio last year. And that is about to be a different story, narrative, this go round, if Ohio can grab game one. One ball and two strikes with Bryce Smith at the plate. RBI in this game, but looking for his first hit here. Or the Marymount transfer, Division Three school in Arlington, Virginia. First year at Ohio. The one-two pitch is down and in, nearly kicked away from Williams. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Sam, but Bryce Smith against Youngstown State cleared the bases with a three RBI triple just a couple of weeks ago. Another chance to do that. A heck of an at bat as he forces the count. He did have a three run triple in that game. Three balls and two strikes. All three runners are gonna be on the move. On your mark. Get set and go. 3-2 is lifted in the right field. Base hit. Antel scores. Here comes another run. Cole Williams. Wow, what a moment. 
A two out, two run single, Bryce Smith delivers. Nine for Bobcats. Jackson Cawthron along with Antle, the two to cross. How about that clutch? Some clutch hitting right there from Bryce Smith. He fell behind in the count, battled back to a full count, which allowed the runners to be on the move. I think that would have scored two runs regardless. That trickled its way into right field after it hit the grass, but it allows for Cole Williams to move up to third base as well, a five spot in the eighth inning for the Bobcats, big time. What a moment there for Bryce Smith out of the eighth spot to break this game open. Ohio has put up five runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. Nick Dolan led off this inning with a spectacular drag bunt single. Cole Williams at third base, Bryce Smith at first, two down. And Dolan check swing liner foul to the right side. Well, Kent State will send the bottom of the order to the table in the top of the ninth. They've got three outs to play with. Ohio, though, looking to add to its lead. A comfortable 9-4 advantage. Heads two up. balls and two strikes, yeah. <laughs> Got to be on full alert in the dugout at all times. And... Fortunately, that didn't strike anybody. Two-two pitch, and the slider misses outside. Three and two. What a great take right there! How many from Dolan? Yeah, how many three-ball counts, Daniel? Have we seen in this inning from Kent State pitching? Outside of it's been a lot. Outside of AJ Roush. Roush I think every single hitter that Jones has faced has found themselves in a three ball count. There's a called strike three and the inning is over. But Ohio puts up five runs. Insurance, incredible insurance. Nine to four lead. The Bobcats take to the top of the ninth inning to try and close the door on the series opener. We'll be back for the top of the ninth inning right after this. Zach Weber trying to shut the door. 1-5-9 ERA coming into this game. And he is in line for the victory if he can record these final three outs. New pinch hitter. We've seen a plethora of pinch hitters for Kent State. As we start the top of the ninth inning, Bo Schinkel, a freshman, takes a strike, nothing and one. Schinkel is a a freshman from Olathe, Kansas. No one is bounced on the ground towards second. Sure-handed Alex Finney, one up and one down. Schinkel is retired. He's, he's hitting 303 in 13 games this season. But that is a ground out, and Ohio's two outs away from victory.
All right, this is the dangerous Jake Casey who homered his last time up and homered with a capital H, Daniel. It was an absolute moonshot. Moonshot, yes. Moonshot. You took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. Over 400 and we don't have the exact number, but close to 450, we think. Had to be. Two run shot. And that was back in the seventh inning to make it a one run game. Here's the one one pitch and it swung on and missed strike two. Zach Weber took over for Dylan Masters with two outs in the top of the seventh inning. He's only allowed one run unearned though. That's a strike on the outside corner. And Ohio is one out away from taking game one of this very important series early on against the MAC preseason favorites. The last chance for Kent State is Connor Ashby, who walked in his only plate appearance. He was a pinch hitter back in the seventh and walked. One ball and no strikes. We knew this game was going to be intense when Kyle Jackson, Kent State's leadoff man, homered on the first pitch of the game. And then Ohio's leadoff man, Paulie Mancino, led off with a homer as well to tie it at one apiece. You're not kidding. And that, that just set, set the tone. Kidding. Back to back, or I shouldn't say back to back, but both leadoff hitters each getting their own in the first inning. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. 3-0 three uh, three is right there for a called strike. 3-1 the count. Two outs. Kent State down to its final outs, and that's ball four. So Connor Ashby has done his job as a pinch hitter. hitter. He's walked twice. Now that'll turn the lineup over to the dangerous Kyle Jackson, but... He's been quiet since that first pitch of the game. One for four. And there's strike one. Kyle Jackson, the senior from Bowling Green, Ohio. Golden flashes trail nine to four in the top of the ninth. That is just outside. One and one. Jackson Cawthorn pointed at Zach Weber though. He was happy with the location there. There's a nice slider from Zach Weber, strike two, and Ohio is one strike away from making a statement against the MAC preseason favorites. One, two, grounded to first. Bryce Smith touches the bag, game over. Bobcats win nine to four and set the tone in game one of this three game series against the MAC preseason favorites, Kent State. Ohio wins and improves to two and two in Mid-American Conference play, six and nine overall with a big time victory over the Kent State Golden Flashes. I mean, what a game, Sam. What a game we were treated to right there. A solid performance all around from the Bobcats. We talked about it pregame. The defense had to show up and the defense showed up. Outside of that one error from Weber himself, it was a throwing error from him, a fundamentally sound ball game from the Bobcats and it proves dividends. They come out of here with a five run victory in game one of this three game set. Huge momentum boost going into tomorrow and Sunday, potentially taking a series from the preseason favorites, the Golden Flashes. How about it? Ohio wins nine to four. And we say so long for now. We'll be back for game two of this three game set tomorrow. First pitch scheduled for two o'clock. So be sure to join us for our outstanding crew. My broadcast partner, Daniel Barnard. I'm Sam Hyman. Good night from Athens, Ohio. Ohio with a statement victory over Kent State nine to four. And the Bobcats are now two and two in conference play, six and nine overall. Kent State falls to eight and nine.
and loses in conference play for the first time this season. Have a great rest of your night, and thanks for watching.